in the world of internet data is everywhere this data is in form of text image video audio and so on with the advancement of ai it becomes very important to integrate a large language model with a data source this is where we have a framework called llama index llama index is simple flexible data framework that helps you integrate a large language model with a custom data source and let's quickly start with this video series where you will kick start with llama index uh, quick guide and in this quick guide we will implement chat with pdf and in this chat with pdf we will integrate llama index with hugging face uh, now why do we need hugging face in this case if you look at most of the online resources available you are integrating llama index with open ai and open ai is your large language model you can't use it until you pay for it so you need a api key and you need to pay as you utilize the token uh, for your large language model this is where we use open source large language model for completely free of cost and that's where we have again face so let's start with our code and before we move on we need to install to step and the installation is very simple we need to install llama index we need to install py pdf our data is a pdf file so we need to install py pdf and we also need to install langchain langchain community you can also directly install langchain but in order to avoid warning it's better if we can install langchain community all right so now before we move on there are few things that we need to discuss so let me quickly open my drawing board all right so now let's suppose i have my data now my data is nothing but my document i have my data and the data is pdfs and the pdf file that i have in this particular use case is a pdf book that is uh, ikigai now sorry for repeating pdf uh, multiple times uh, ikigai is a japanese culture book which is really wonderful on how you need to lead your life and you need to read it once now after you fetch your data the next thing is you need to load the content and once you load the content you need to create a small loads of it you need to create small load now this load are nothing but smaller segment of your larger data i'll quickly complete this diagram node 2 this will be my node 1 and let me copy this again and paste it here and this becomes my nth node and once you have your data you convert or parse your document into nodes this nodes is the smaller segment of your data your data and lastly once you have this data you need to create something called as service context service context is where you integrate your embedding model with your nodes so you add your service context and inside service context we also need to pass our llm model so now let's understand you have the data you convert your data into smaller node and each node is in text you convert the text into vector form and then you store the vector form into something called as storage context store storage context which is nothing but your vector store you can also call it as vector database all right so now what we did we got the data we converted it into nodes that is nothing but parse your document into nodes and each node is associated with an embedding model which converts your text into a vector form and you need to store this vector into a storage if you combine all these three if you combine your nodes storage context and service context it becomes an index now let's understand the importance of indexing when you build an application now let's suppose i upload my pdf it creates the index the next time when i upload the same pdf it should not create index why i have already stored my data so if there are two user if they are uploading same document again the data or index of that particular data should already be existing this is where we have persist directory and persist directory you can just define it as a variable which is db db stands for database now what happens is once i upload my pdf it should create the index and it should store somewhere the next time when i use the same data it should not create index rather it should fetch 
from my persist directory so we will look into the if condition once we get into the code part so as of now just understand what is your data what is your load what is your service context and what is your storage context and how do you create the index and save that index in a persist storage that's it so let's get with the code part so let's quickly get into the code we need to import few statements now and in order to get started let's use llama index from llama index the first step is to get our data which is our simple directory loader the second step is we need to create our node and in order to get node we need to use from llama index node parser import simple node parser and once you have the node parser we have two more things that we discussed one is you need your service context you also need your storage context now we have three things we have node we have service context we have storage context we need to create index of it we need to create vector store index all right now inside service context we need two things one is our large language model one is our large language model and the large language model is our open source model which we will fetch it from agging face and now we also need to use an embedding model from agging face again but we can't directly use agging face from embedding rather we'll use langchain and from langchain we will use our embeddings which is inference api agging face all right sorry it should be from community it should be from community embeddings import it should be agging face inference api embeddings now why are we using inference why do we need inference i am currently running my code in a vs code and it doesn't have any gpus so i'm running my entire code on cpu when i use a language model or an embedding model it's a very high end it's a large model and it requires gpus at least 15 gb vram but i don't have that gpu vram and this is where we use something called as inference api inference api lets you use a open source model uh, on agging face cloud and it provides you a token you just have to use a token and run your model on inference so that it doesn't load locally in order to avoid loading your model locally we need to use inference api and since we are using collab uh, we are not using collab we need to log in we need to log in inside our agging face up so let's quickly log in uh, also let's use environment variable uh, this step should be very simple we have simple directory loader we have the node parser service context storage context then create index our large language model embedding model uh, embedding model we need to take it from agin face which is through langchain and then you need to log in now where do we need to log in we need to log in into our agin face account quickly go into aginface.co i have already done this twice in my previous video in rag you can check out the playlist in my description first you need to go to aginface.co get into settings and on the left hand side you will find something called as access tokens create new token that's it create new once you do that copy your particular hf token now hf token stands for aginface access token i have copied mine all right and now what what i need to do is i need to log in and when you log in you need to define a token and which is hf token that's it so now we are able to log in into our aginface account and once this is done now let's understand how we need to define a persist directory if you look at my uh, code or if you look at my diagram what i made once i upload a pdf it should create index store in a persist directory next time when i run it use the persist directory don't create a new token so let's understand we need us something called as persist directory which is db and then if persist directory doesn't exist if not if it doesn't exist if my persist directory doesn't exist then i will create then i will create 
if not i will load the existing load the existing index if it doesn't exist create the new index i hope this makes sense if our persist directory doesn't exist create new if it exist load the existing i hope this is very simple so let's move on and before we can move on we also need to save our hf token in environment variable how do we do that you just have to use os.admin and inside that you need to define again space up underscore api token again space up api token equals to my hf token all right so we are we are able to define few uh, introductory step so let me quickly get back to the code now let's fill this thing initially i am uploading my data and that data should be saved in a directory if you can see it's in directory which is named as data inside with data i have a pdf file so let's load that file let's load my document it should be simple directory loader data dot load data pay very close attention we need to write it in this way if my persist directory doesn't exist only then i need to create the index in order to create the index you need node you need simple directory you need storage directory but in order to get that node you need your data this is where we are loading the data from document simple directory reader get your data then you need to parse your document into nodes that's where you need to define your parser what is my parser it's nothing but simple node parser and then get your nodes from your parser dot get nodes from document document i hate this code auto completion i hate this all right so let's write document all right so now we have the document we have the parser which is our load now let's define our service context for service context we need to have a llm model and an embedding model so let's define our llm model and embedding model and in order to initialize my llm and embedding model i will do it outside my if condition because i also need this two statement when i load the existing so what i'll do is i'll define it outside and i'll write quickly the code i'll do llm llm equals to again for inference i need to load my model name now my model name is nothing but again space h4 which is the repository uh name uh it's the account name inside that we have a uh, uh this is the account name inside the account name we have the repository which is zephyr so zephyr is the model that we will use i'll just check, check this spelling again space hf zephyr underscore 7v alpha all right it's correct and then you need to define your api key which is hf token all right folks we have defined our llm model now we need to define our embedding one it's called embed model equals to from lan chain lan chain embedding inside this we need to define our again face inference api embeddings we need to define our api api key api key is nothing but again your hf token and then you need to define a model name your model name is nothing but the yaml peer gte large all right so now we have defined our llm model we have also defined our embedding model so let's go and define our service context service context equals to service context from defaults from defaults i need to define my llm equals to llm my llm equals to llm then my embedding i hate this contour completion it covers my entire page then you need to define your embed model equals to embed model and then you need to define your chunk size 
which is pi 12. I hope it is visible now. We define a service context. Inside my service context, from defaults, I need a LLM model. I need an embedding model. I need a chunk size. And then we need to define our storage context. Storage context equals to storage context from defaults. Now you need to pay very close attention. In our case, we are just using the default one. If not, you need to use an open source uh, vector database such as Chroma, VV8, Milbus, Qdrun, Fias. And in our case, we are not using any of them. This is the first video. So we'll use it in upcoming videos. So let's use the default one. And let's proceed in creating the index. Now, what do we need to create index? We need nodes. We need service context. We need storage context. Simple. So define your node. Define your nodes. Define your service context. Define your storage context. Awesome. Awesome. Define your storage context. So, all right, folks. This is it. This is it. We are able to create the index. So let's beef out what we did. We imported statement. And since we are using again face models, we need to log in into our again face app and we need to create a persist directory because when I upload a data, I create index only once. If it exists, read it from there. And then we need to define LLM model, embedding model. And if it doesn't exist, then I create new. If it exists, if it exists, I will load from there. And we need to have document to read my data. I need to parse my document into nodes. I need, I need a service context. I need a storage context. Once I have node, service context, storage context, save that in your vector store index. And then what we have, we need to store this inside our persist directory. Now what we need to do, we need to save my index into a storage context dot persist. And where do we need to persist? In my persist directory, which is db. That's it. I also need to use this uh, argument persist directory equals to persist directory. It's just a variable name. The variable name is db. As you can see, I've already saved it because I'm running it live. I'm not running it. Uh, I mean, I'm just copy pasting what I wrote earlier before I make this video. So I've already created a db by running the same code. So this is your, so only you are able to see it. If not, I need to create it from new. Now what I will do is, I will load this particular DB. I've already saved a DB by writing this code. Now what I need to do is, I need to load it. Now how do I load? This is where we need to add one more import statement. From Lama index, we need to import load index from storage. Now what we need to do? Whenever our persist directory is already existing, we need to load, we need to load our index, load index from storage. And inside my storage, inside my uh, load index storage, I need to define service context. And I also need to define my storage context. Uh, I need to define my storage context. And if you see, these two particular storage context and service context are my local variables which you can use only inside my if condition. That's where we also need to define my service context again. This is why I told you to implement LLM and embed model above your if condition. So let's quickly copy paste the code. You just have to copy the same code. Copy the same code from persist uh, directory. I mean, copy the same code from service context. And you need to copy the same code from storage context. There is just one change we need to do. When you copy your storage context, when you have to load the existing index, this is where you need to define your persist directory. Again, I'll repeat, when you create new, you are not specifying your persist directory, but when you are loading, you need to define your persist directory. So this is one change that you need to do, that you need to do. And then you directly need to create the index. That's it. We have completed the indexing part, whether you have to create the new index or whether you need to create uh, or whether you need to load. So create and load, both are done. Now comes the final part of this video, 
where we create a query engine. Query engine is where user writes a prompt and what happens once I write the prompt? Now let's suppose you have a query, you have a query and this query is nothing but your prompt. The first thing is it is converted into an embedding function. So let's understand it by a diagram. Let me scroll this. Let's create a new di diagram. Let me scroll this. Now let's suppose we have a user. Now this user is me. This user is me. What I'll do is I'll write a prompt. I will write a prompt or I write a query. I write a prompt. I write a query. The first thing is my query and prompt both are text. That's where you need to uh, convert your text into vectors and you can do this by embedding. Once you have the embedding, you will look into the relevant documents inside your index. You have the embedding, you do the search technique. Now based on your schematic search result, it will generate the relevant documents. It will generate your relevant documents or I'll just tell relevant uh, documents. And this relevant documents, you need to define K. If in case you're defining your key value to be two, it will retrieve two documents. Now these two retrieve documents are relevant to what query you have given. If you ask who is the author of the book, it will look into your data. It will check where author name is written, wherever the author name is written. There might be multiple cases where the author name is written, but you need to only retrieve two documents. If in case you want to retrieve more, you can define your key value. Now what will happen is user writes the prompt and that prompt internally is converted into embedding using your service context. And then you're looking into your index and based on this similarity result, it will generate the relevant context or document. This particular document, right? This particular document is passed as a context. This is passed as a context context along with prompt to your large language model to a large language model which is your LLM and once this is done once you pass this you are generating back a response to the user so this is the flow that we need for a query engine this entire thing can be done using query engine the first thing what now we need to do is we need to define the user prompt and what prompt I'll use? I'll just use spy best lessons from the book. This is my prompt. I need to know what are the five best lessons. And now I need to define my query engine. I'll just use my index as my query engine. That's it. And I'll use a variable and I will run my query engine. I'll just run my query engine by adding the user prompt. And I will print my response. I'll print my response. That's it. I'll just repeat what we did. Uh, since I'm running it live, in most of the cases, what will happen? In your case, since you're writing this code for the first time, you will create the new index. Initially, if you look at your directory, you will only have data and app.py. Once you run this particular statement, you will create this new DB. In my case, I've already created the DB, so that's fine. And once your index is created, you need to use a query engine. In query engine, you need to define the prompt and run the query, that's it. Let's run this code, let's run this code. Now in order to run, we just have to run python app.py. And now what it will do is, the first step is it will try to log in into my admin face app and then it will get into the query engine. Now before it gets into the query engine, since my DB is already created as I said earlier, it will load from the existing one and then it will generate the response. Since I'm running it on my local, it's gonna take few seconds, uh, probably a minute as well. So let's just wait and once I get the response, we'll be back. But let's see how much time it's gonna take. So all right, folks, I've got my response. As you can see, it said, stay active and don't retire. Take it slow. Don't fill your stomach. Surround yourself with good friends. Get in shape for your next workday. We got our response. You can also try different response. I'll just write who is the author of the book. 
and what is this book about so is the author of this book and what is this book about i'll just write one question it's going to be too much of time so i'll just write who is the author of the book and so let's print this particular uh, prompt let's print this particular prompt python app.py and now it should be very quick why because i've already saved my again pay sub into cache and from cache it will just pick up my access token and it will log in and query engine should also be very quick it should be able to generate the author name in few seconds now as you can see it has generated the response it has given the author name and it also gave the book and i didn't ask to write the book but still it has generated the book name this is too cool and obviously whenever i will drag application uh, it's like this is way too cool man how is it even doing there are too many things which are going underneath we have various method we can enhance we have custom retrievers we have response synthesizer this is just the first part of llama index series we will have around 5 to 6 more videos coming very soon uh, do subscribe and stay updated we also have a discord link in the description and if you want to get involved in any discussion do join our discord server until then see you in the next video thank you so much